And welcome back to the greatest show on earth. That's right. This is Saturday Night Gaming, and I am Tony Stevens bringing you another chapter from the great narrative landscape that is Heavenscape. Uh, this specific chapter called Void Runner. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, I want you to know that your country is the best. Whichever country you are in right now as you're listening to us, we love it. We love where you're from, and we love that you listen to us. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let my players introduce themselves, their characters, and just give you a real short synopsis of what they're going through currently. I'm Jessica. Um, I'm playing Adine. We just got put into this sort of secret tunnel area, and then the landscape changed, and now we are in the midst of a battle, and all these ships are taking off, and ship because I, I was on a ship you might you might have been on a boat yeah, we'll see during that scene i was on a ship so i don't know where i am right now <laughs> but the happens. landscape has changed all right i'm chuck and i'm playing heavy metal and there's some dude in my head Say, hey <laughs> in my head hey listen hey, hey. listen hey. <laughs> all right oh there are people in my world Oh, hey, I'm John, and I'm There inside. are people in your world. No, I got like a world um, on Facebook horizon of people in there right now. <laughs> I'm just checking my... Anyway. Uh, <laughs> my name's John, and my character's name is Tom. He is currently um, at the size of a synapse, and he is trying to reconstruct uh, memories for Chuck, but failed horribly. And now he's unlocked some horrifying memory about 4-2. And, and well, like out of character, Chuck wasn't here for that session, so that's probably why. His character was here. Yeah. But yeah. he was not here. So he doesn't know what he was doing. Obviously, because <laughs> Ulthar showed up. And I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but Ulthar and Chuck are never seen in the same room at the same time. And Until notice. now. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, as... Uh, as Killian wakes to a new reality, he sees the world on fire below him. He sees a great big building that's falling apart. He's on a ship with his goddaughter. Gotcha. Um, there is a large beast, uh, and by large I mean at least 30 stories high. And by beast you mean... Not really. Ulthar. Um, <laughs> that's attacking the landscape, uh, the city below. Um, thousands of Olkai running around. And of course, four two units that are latching on and trying to assimilate the great beast that is Ulthar. And there's a mech suit probably moving towards it at this point. There is a mech suit that is moving towards it with the size, sass. The size of a building. It is also the size of a building and very sassy. <laughs> It carries the traits of its pilot. So am I on its back at this point? Where am I? At this you point? are on a ship. Okay. A ship that has fresh, unscathed letters that read Exodus. Um, do I remember that this is where I was? Do I know this is where I was? Do I recognize any of this? It was very recent and fresh. So yes, I would say that you remember it. Okay. Um, is he like next to me? He is. Hey, I know where we are. Where are we? <laughs> this is, Valis is about to be destroyed. We need to leave. Strathmore is down, yeah, we're leaving. We're on a ship. Strathmore is down there and he's about to kill the planet or kill the realm. And uh, we escape, but some stuff happens and Ulthar may not. Like, we, we just pretty much destroy Ulthar. Ulthar. Okay. So, um, I might need you to throw me down there in a minute. We'll see what happens. Throw you? Yeah. It's okay. I get back, but... Okay. I, get, I, just, I don't know where we are right now or what's happening, so I'm just letting you know. At some point, I, I'm going to go down there, maybe. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you do see that the, the large mechanized robot the one that's the size of a building 
is now running wildly towards the gigantic cancerous beast that is Ulthar as Ulthar continues to scream look at what you've done to this realm you've destroyed it you've poisoned it with robots and stein everywhere my job is to bring this back into order as the robot and he start to clash owls inside the robot by the way and you can tell that it's it's definitely having difficulty the blackness the the chaos energy that is Ulthar is beginning to take over the robotic creature. So I have to jump down there if I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. If this were time travel, that would need to happen. If it were a dream, it may or But may I would not recognize all of it. Yes. I'm going to jump down. Okay. All right. So, um,. Yeah, you can jump down. You launch down to, and if I remember correctly, you did very dexterously. Yeah, I landed Uh, on it, and I used my pendant, and he opened a void thingy, and somehow that helped. I don't remember how. (laughs) So you you landed on the robot, and you activated your pendant to assist him in boosting his runic energy, and he hits the detonation switch for the robot. Um, and teleports away. And I jumped off the robot. To save himself, you jumped off the robot as it exploded, and you run into Strathmore. And as you do so, this time, you do so with these new memories nagging at the back of your brain. Things that you've experienced just recently, letters that you've read, understandings of what you may have... uh, what it was that he was doing Um, so when you see him this time and you see the darkness taking him over uh, you may have a different view or perspective on the situation well i knew it was my dad before but i guess i didn't realize he was like still in communicating communications with my mom um well i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to run up and kind of show him I'm going to try to show him the pendant. Okay. And as you do, um, what you can do for me is you can roll a perception check, and I want you to roll it off of a 30 uh, benchmark. Oh. Okay. Um, 19. Total? All right, so you definitely don't perceive anything different. Um, You do notice that he has a soft look in his eyes towards you, even though it's all encapsulated in this crazy armor that he's wearing. But he does... He doesn't kill me. (laughs) He does not kill you. He (laughs) holds the amulet in his hand for a moment, recognizes it, and then launches you back at the Voidrunner ship. Um, As you land upon it, 4-2 offers to help you. Can I roll dexterity to avoid getting injected oh, this time? No, he's always up and down. With, within the dream you can. It doesn't change your history, though. Ugh. So when, when he threw me back at the ship, 4-2 uh, injected me with nanobots. So 4-2 stands before you as you're holding on to the edge of the ship and says, mm-hmm. I will help you, but first I will inject you. I do not consent to this. I was injected. I did not ask for consent. Yeah. He injects you and then pulls you into the ship and the virus that is the Simtech uh, begins to spread throughout your body. Now, as you're pulled back into the ship, there's a voice that calls over the intercom systems. Anybody that knows what to do with an engine I swear, get down there, fix it right now. I'm trying to kick us into high gear and get us void ported, but mm, it's not working. It's not working. It was working last time. He's new. Let's go figure out what's going on. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. Edited it. Let's so. go. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. Because that's something to do. Let's go. Cool. All right. So you know engines. So you run into the engine room. 
and it seems like something that would be an easy fix for you. So as you grab onto the engine and everything's trying to kick into gear, making this faster than void travel work, the FVT, there's energy that starts to bounce all around the engine. You grab onto the lever and you start to maneuver it into place as the energy consumes you. Oh, no. And that energy launches you elsewhere. Now, out of your mind, you know that where it launched you was a realm known as Tenebris, which you tried to survive with the best of your ability. But within that, there was a crazy man trying you to get betrayed. a hold of the sword. Ugh. And that man trying to get a hold of that sword betrayed you to the very end. It really stressed me out. I want you to know that. And that is where you lost your body. Yep. And you became fully heavy metal. Um, now, this is the moment when you know that you all launched into the void. You lost heavy metal and did not know where he went. And now you know where and how that happened. Uh, however, as you launch back into the void this time, you notice that there are subtle differences in this memory. There seem to be more shadows creeping about the skirts of the room. The people seem more sullen, their eyes sunken and dark. Can I ask out of character it's question? Mm -hmm. The the engine that blew up that we went over to look at, that was it was a runestone that stayed and tried to blow it up. Is was that a reality drive? Hang tight. Okay. Um, Sorry. Are you I just, talking about when we went over to the yeah. other ship that Solaris blew up? Or when our oh, engine Oh, yeah. Was Solaris was Solaris. trying to blow up uh, a power reactor that uh, somebody else recognized had some sort of... It wasn't him. It was actually the person that's not here right now. Right. Uh, recognized that there was a very specific power source that that reactor is running off of. Right. Uh, but I don't think he shared that information yet when the side of the ship got exploded. Our gotcha. ship also had an engine malfunction. Right, and we I went through the illusion to yes. fix the engine. Again. And that and this engine, time not teleported. That engine was taken over by little Olkai beasts that infected his fingers. Gotcha. And attacked everyone. And then Ulthar ran amok throughout the ship trying to find a body to host him. Huh. He, was, he was the goop. That. Clogging up the engine, basically. He tried to convince Calcifer to let him host his body. I'm surprised Calcifer, Calcifer didn't no. say yes. <laughs> Calcifer said, <laughs> heck no. Because the the finger that was infected by Ulthar oh, tried to attack him and was like kind of... Oh, that was amazing. Kind of non-consensually. He squealed. Non-consensually attacked. No, he no, didn't he squeal. Squealed. He screamed like a girl really yes. loud. Yes, it was amazing. Um, <laughs> however... You are now caught up to this point in what you recognize as history, but you notice that everybody around you has deep, dark, sullen, sunken eyes. There are shadows moving around the outskirts of the room. And Am you I are in the cargo still... bay? Yes, you are. Okay. But you notice that the cargo bay isn't as it was when you first entered the void. The cargo bay is in a state of disarray, and there is... Uh, crates and freight boxes that are toppled over. There are people that seem to be caught underneath them. There are some of them that just seem to be staring blankly at you. I'm going to go look for Remy and the orphans. All right. Yeah. Easy to find. Um, he's actually protecting them behind a barrier. Are all 32 of them there? Yes. And one of them is actually held by the scruff of his shirt okay. in Remy's hand. So they're all good. Do they seem like different? Do they seem? They seem out of place within this. Like the only bright color within a gray template. What kind of barrier? Can I, do I need to roll a barrier? Light. So it's Remy making the barrier. Yes. Um, can they see me or? It doesn't seem like they're recognizing that you're there at this point. It's okay. We're not here yet. Okay. Um, That's the only possible yeah. explanation. Or we're just watching. 
like they were, were they still in a memory. We're not actually there. Um, but whose memories are we seeing? So where is he right this second? He's gone. No, he's with you. I just got blow, thrown away. From he's you. with you. He got thrown through time, but he remembers how he got thrown through time and what's going on in his own mind. Yeah. So Basically, jolt, all jolt, of his... The jolt from the engine kick-started my memories back in order. So the other... It's him, almost like all of his The other him is neurons. like in Tenebris right now, but he's here in this memory. He is always here in his own memory, Yes. And it's almost like all of his neurons kind of started clicking and firing and putting together his own history. That's me. I'm doing that. I'm doing it. It's almost like he remembers how he got from each point in his life to the next point. Um, Should I have rolled for that? It's almost like you worked together with someone else who was rebuilding his brain when he was out of commission. Uh, okay, cool. Well, but I'm going to take all the credit. You should. You're welcome. <laughs> Get out of my head. I fixed the problem that I caused. You can thank me later. Or now. <laughs> Now's good. Get out my head. Very well. <laughs> yeah, so like, I'll, I'll get out of his head and I'll I'll manifest as my normal golden self. Oh, this guy again. He's been it's in my me. Who's I talking to? Back so in that other place. He appears I didn't know next who we were to talking you. To. You and should never abandon your puppies. I saw him, he was a dog. Yes. He appears next to you, and as you're looking at heavy metal, you actually notice that he is much more sleek than he was before when you saw him taken away by Solaris to be fixed. He is less erratic parts put together and more seamless and perfect function I'm pretty, I'm pretty form and function back. so he's back to a normal look but um, i would have known him as when we lived in the sewers no he's still all robot but he but is I'm not much, so more, much terrifying terminator he doesn't robot. look like a clump he's yeah he's mark ii He's heavy metal mark too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, he seems to be re-affixed with himself. And of course you see Tom rematerialize next to him with his fancy duds that he seems to continue to grow as he goes through this adventure with you. He thinks that they look cool and make him much more sophisticated. He yeah. even grew boots. Yeah, boots. Really big shoulder pads that come off. Yeah, yeah, you know, I show her. A, I take out a notebook and I show her soul a picture of me now. My soul sees this picture. Yeah, yeah. So like Tom understands that our souls are actually these otherworldly beings that control our every action and mm -hmm. choose to live in this I'm fantasy very world. I can't right find it. Tom Probably says he apologizes. Folder. No, it's it's in here somewhere. Okay. But he hopes that you'll see him through your eye, oh, here. as if in his soul. Your soul's eye, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. and almost like a third eye. It's, it's almost. It's somewhere. Where is this? <laughs> you sure it's not in your folder? I'm pretty sure there he is. So he's got clothes on now. So he's got clothes. Big I fancy see. belt. He looks pretty cool. Nice boots. Are these pants or underoos? Underoos. Uh, underoos. Underoos. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> They're pink. Well, you look different than to you match did my when, hair. Yeah. when you turned into a dog. So. I mean, I he he understands now that he's been naked this whole time, and he's a little embarrassed. Not because he's like shy, just he he didn't intend to make anyone feel uncomfortable. And he understands your perception. Yeah. So. He fixed it by putting on we were definitely eccentric topic. tights. Yeah, and underwear. I'm wearing underwear now. You're okay. Well, well um, I'm not really sure. I guess I'll roll perception because I don't really know what to do with this situation. I mean, the kids seem okay. So All gonna... right, benchmark 30. 32. All right, so... As you look around the room, you notice that all of these shadows seem to be accumulating and maneuvering to one central location 
where this large amount of rubble from the crates that fell over and smashed seemed to be they seem to be moving towards this one spot with all of this rubble clumped up in a pile. I'm going to tell Heavy Metal. Right. All the shadow thingies are going to this one spot over here. Okay. Let's kill it. Okay. Kill the spot. Yeah. Let's... No, the shadow thingies. Do I still have my Remy my Remy knife shit. that suck all the shadow things out and then plug the hole? Well, wait. The, no, because my kids are in here. <laughs> but I do have this knife that exercises shadow things. Nice. Okay. I can't stab them all, but start slicing and dicing. Yeah. Slicing and dicing. All right. Because I don't think I have any bullets that'll that will hurt those. So, like, is this where all the people are trapped under the crates and stuff? There are people trapped under the crates. So you want to run over there and basically defend this location. Uh, by stabbing as many shadow thingies well, as Well, how you many can. shadow things are there? A lot. Could, uh, <gasps> can I start by just helping Wait somebody out from under a crate? Sure. I have a sword. You do? Let's see what happens when I pull out my sword. <laughs> Excuse me while I whip this. <laughs> <laughs> it's really big. It is large, and people <laughs> notice that you have a sword. They go, oh my, that's a big sword. It's blue. <laughs> it's kind of blue. I wonder gonna, if it has any magic I'm properties. I'm going to help somebody out from under a crate and tell them to run to the barrier that Remy's creating. <laughs> All right. Um, so as you get over to the crates, uh, you're going to need to roll strength to move the crate I off of it. You cannot move a crate. You cannot. I can. Ah, here we go. So give me a 30 on strength. That is 27. Can I, like cheer, can I like cheer him on to help him out? Or like sort of try? I have a three in strength. I could like try to lift a little. So as he starts to lift up this one crate, he's not able to like lift it all the way up or throw it or anything of that nature. But he does lift it up to a point, and you notice that there is a hand that is caught underneath it, but it's Pull visible it now. And you see that that hand has very dark skin tone with gold etched markings it's on calcifer. it. Pull him out. Can I pull him out? I, don't I can only strength. hold this box so long. I don't know. How does Tom do on these things? Tom, can you help us get calcifer out from under this box? Do I look like someone who does manual labor? You're you're literally you could lift in my you could lift all the these boxes up with your brain. You know that, right? Oh <laughs> you're gonna lift make me all blush. the boxes up that are crushing okay. all the people with your brain. Well, <laughs> you have you have nice biotic mood. powers. You like, can do this. Some of his golden cheek becomes a little bit more brass as he is blushing. <laughs> like yeah. you like you've played Tetris your whole life. Stack them all over there yeah. on that wall. Pick them all up and move them away from us. Or actually crash them into the old kind. Do you have magic? Yes. Pick them up and crash them into but the old kind. I don't know any spells. <laughs> <laughs> I got like 11 in magic. Okay. okay. Can I use cosmic knowledge to think of a you need telekinesis. spell? Or telekinesis. Your Just cosmic like, knowledge doesn't really work like that, but so, you can use cosmic knowledge and roll on it if you want to. Like like roll like... To pick up the box? To pick up the box. Awareness if you wanted to, but if you oh. want to pick up the box, oh, oh. you need to do something physical. Can I do it like this? Okay, so... Okay, I am the spoon. Huh? There is no and it, spoon. There is no box. <laughs> it is I that am stacked. And so I'm using cosmic knowledge to move the box without moving the box by moving myself. I'm doing this with my hands. <laughs> I'm going to stay. Um, I don't know. I don't think you're the box. I think you are Tom. I'm the spoon? You can transform it What's into your, a spoon. Do you have any strength? <laughs> no. Me neither. <laughs> we're both, One we're both, person came with strength. We're both really weenies. <laughs> um, I could, like, you know, manage people to go move the boxes for me. What if I got, like, what if I did this? 
took all my fingers and and they all just went and tried to move the box. Do they each have like a two for strength? Does it add up? Does it compound? Um, how much strength do you have? Total of two. They each have a percentage of oh, strength. Oh, they're so weird. That equal up to two. Yeah, oh my God. Hmm. Uh, oh, I guess I could... How tall How tall are these uh, stacks? Need to be? Like, probably together, me and Tom could help him lift the box the remaining way. Like, yeah, but, like, Tom doesn't really I tell lift you boxes. what. I feel like we could do that. What if I can... Maybe I could do an illusion where you just feel like the boxes are already stacked. And then we go to the bar. Do you have anything that could destroy the boxes? Uh, let's see... I got evade. We don't want to destroy Calcifer. So we want to get rid of the boxes. If you want to get rid of, I guess that's that's what they're aiming for. They can. You can definitely see Calcifer's hand can, poking out from underneath. The I can pile teleport the boxes somewhere else. Ooh, that's a good idea. That you can do. Okay. I will teleport some boxes. Benchmark thirty. Or maybe not. Let's see. It's doable, so I can I can ask it of you. Okay. I've done that. I roll an 18. Nice. All right. So you do. You teleport a bunch of the boxes away. And you see Calcifer's body laying there right next to where Gabriel the Argonaut is also laying unconscious. And everything starts to kind of shimmer back into a reality. And you recognize that you are here. You made it to the cargo bay. You've been walking with each other through the corridor the whole time to make it to the cargo bay. I'm going to pull Calcifer and uh, just, I'm gonna just like drag him to safety. All right, so as you're dragging him, you notice that many of the shadows are starting to maneuver faster towards you. Grab Gabriel. Somebody grab Gabriel and pull him too. I got him. All right, so he lifts him with one So hand we're going to put him in the barrier that Remy has made with Clock. the kids. All right, so are you all climbing into the barrier? Or? Well, I'm just going to put them there and then run back. Now I'm going to go check out um, if I can use this sword on the old guy. Right, yeah. We're just going to get them to safety and then help out. Okay, so the two of you... Now, Tom, what are you doing? Staying with them, fighting yeah, the yeah, old guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, no, not fighting the old guy. <laughs> He chuckles as oh. if that's a silly suggestion. I'll observe them. <laughs> he will watch. Fighting the old guy. <laughs> All right. Several of the shadows begin to spill forth into each other until they become one larger entity as it lifts itself from the ground and lets out a tremendous roar and faces the both of you as you stand between him and it and the barrier that holds whatever interest it is that they have. Well, they're not getting past the barrier because I know what that's made of. Um, I'm going to try to stab one. It. Oh, so it's all one thing now? Yeah. Like well, you said all... several of them. Are yeah. they all into one? All the shadows compiled into one giant, nasty, hate you thing. It's a gestalt. Does it look like it hates you, Ulfar. yes. It does not look like Ulfar. Does it sound like Ulfar? It, does it smell like Ulfar? Kind, Is it Ulfar? It smells like <laughs> mint jam. It's Ulfar. Um, <laughs> and it sounds very grumbly, but it doesn't seem to be as aware as Ulfar. Well, right, well Ulfar was going after... Ulthar, Ulthar was going after okay. Runestrom. Mm -hmm. Because Calcifer told him to go after Rune's room, which is a horrible idea. But uh, I'm just going to stab it. Okay. Whatever I can So I you're going to try to stab it? With my sword for t with 27. I'm going to let... Okay. Yeah, he can go first. I'm going to give up my initiative for that because he's got a big sword and I have a tiny throwing knife. I guess I could try and like shoot with an arrow. <laughs> All right, what's the attack damage on your sword? It is, I think it's eight. If it's a heavy weapon, it's an eight. Is there any additional benefit to the sword? Um, it's 
Um, I use resistance to fire. Okay. Well, that'll be helpful. All right. So you slash at the creature, and it definitely does cut the creature. It seems to howl out in pain, um, but it has become even more aggressive now as it starts to writhe towards you, and you said that you were going to try and stab it with your dagger. Yep. All right, go ahead. 25 benchmark. Dexterity. All right, so you too, you succeed in stabbing into it. And, and I have Remy's knife, so it's yeah. like source energy. And it does. It does damage. Now, what's the damage rating on The knife attack? itself has two damage. It has previously exercised one creature from a human. Okay. If, but it's source energy, so can I use a charge for my pendant to enhance that? You could to step it up a notch. To the next level of damage. Which is three. What's the difference between light and medium weapons? Heavy weapons are eight or six, unless they're two handed, which are eight. Correct. So it's two, four, six. So four. Um, okay, I'll use one charge. I still have one charge left on my pendant. Okay. So it definitely does damage as you see the uh, bright white electricity kind of coursing out of the dagger into the flesh of the darkened beast. And you can see a lot of the flesh kind of uh, oil away and lash out in tendrils as if this, this is very painful to it. Um, Tom, was there something that you wanted to do before I move forward? Yes, I am going to shoot it with a arrow all right so you're going to do your energy arrow Go yeah ahead. yeah i'm going to do my energy arrow 25 benchmark can, dexterity can aim for that or uh you run that off of your ma weird mm -hmm. magic okay hit it in 20 natural 20 now it's 11. <laughs> so like uh <laughs> so it's 17. Do I get anything for having the archer? No. What is it set to? Proficient? Train? It just says equipment, right? So I have a bow. So you, you have, have a bow, a... but do you have archery as a skill? Um, no. <laughs> Might want to do I that. I do not I have. Want. I have acrobatics. All right, so... So, you're shooting a bolt of energy at it. 17. Yeah. And you go to shoot it, but it seems to be very aware of the fact that there are these little creatures attacking it right now. One of them hit him with a sword. The other one stabbed him with a dagger. It hurt. And he sees you launching this bolt of energy at it, which draws his attention to you. Okay. You miss. Definitely. Um, and it lashes out at you. Now, in this lashing out, you are only going to take half damage because you didn't feel so phenomenally. Uh, but you will take half damage. So that is going to be five. Okay. That goes against your health. Are you going to be okay? Uh, health, yeah, black. my current is at zero. So you're at zero now. Yeah. All right, so you're not in the negatives yet, so you don't have anything like an effect, like bleeding or anything. Yeah. But you definitely see that his flame is weak, and his form is starting to kind of puddle a little. <laughs> it's like he can't hold his consistency, and he's kind of like dripping on the ground as this thing lashes out at him with shadow fire. That's its instant lash out to him. Now, it is also still pretty peeved at you two as you attacked it, so both of you can roll for defense or evasion. Uh, 
benchmark 25? 26. All right. Can I swing back as a defense or should I just roll? I mean, you just roll in defense. Okay. So, like, you can block with the sword if you're taking it, like, right. physique wise, or you can roll out of the way. Yeah, if you Is this AoE or just regular? Anatomy. Yes, it's AoE. You did well. So, as the shadow fire launches out from it again, like a uh, dark light that's just booming forth from its gullet, it's launching it like breathing fire almost, but this fire doesn't hold light to it, it almost breathes shadows. Uh, as that fires forth at you, you both manage to evade the attack and defend yourselves, holding defensive stances. However, the beast seems to be enraged and it's starting to grow even larger as it moves forward. What was the benchmark? 25. Okay. And you went well over. You are available for an instant attack if you want to. Okay. I'm going to stab it again. Just anywhere? Um, I don't, it, I don't know what it looks like. It just looks like a form of oozing blackness. Yeah. With indigo eyes. Yeah. Uh, I guess an eyeball. Sure. Okay. It seems like the only thing I can see about it. Do, do I have to roll for that or is it? Um, no, you get the instant. So, uh, you, what's your damage again? Two. Or are you um, using another charge? Yes. That was AoE. Yeah. Unless, that was an exceptional success, right? Or it was? That was 10 plus. You said you got a 37, correct? Or 33? 33. So, not That's just exceptional. just regular damage. But, yeah. Okay. Then, yeah, it's just a 2. Because if it was an exceptional, then I would get plus 2. But, yeah, so that's just 2. All right, so you run up, you stab it in the eye. That eye seems to, like, implode with the energy as you're pushing forth with this light energy versus its darkness. And it howls out again, writhing in pain, but still pulsating from its rage as it grows larger and larger. And I slice into it with 25. All right, 25, and what's your damage again? Is it six. eight? Yeah. Six. I think it's six can't really read it. I think it looks like a six. Is it two-handed or one-handed? Do you have two-handed mastery? Yeah. If you have two-handed mastery, then it's an eight. Okay, then it's eight. All right. And then when he runs up, basically slashes it in chest, and it reels back again, allowing you your opportunity to kind of like fucking roll back again, getting another defensive position for yourself. Mm -hmm.